Hello YouTube! In this video I will show you guys how to scrap these pager systems. This is the main control panel box that you would mount on the wall to call a specific number. These are pretty cool. So here, this is one of those vibrating pager units that whenever you're waiting at a hospital or restaurant or something for your order to be ready, to be picked up or for you to go to a specific room, they will page you on these. And what these are is that they vibrate whenever something gets sent from here to this. So, without further ado, let's begin this teardown. So here's a demonstration of this JTAG pager system. So this is actually, I finally got this working. It's in really bad condition. But anyway, like, the internals are kind of messed up. Like, it's not always transmitting. But anyway, so there it's hard to see but you can see it says enter pager number so what this will do is that you'll be so this is a pager that's working as you can see the battery's in there and to show you it works so I take whenever it plug it in it beeps and vibrates pretty pretty strongly too so anyway so here so this might be attached to somebody um, through a belt buckle or maybe in someone's pocket around the table and what they do is there's on every single one of these pagers there's a number there 23 which means there's keypad in order to page someone you have to hit the 2 3 the 23 and so whenever you do that and you hit transmit which is at the bottom see so it vibrates so it lets the person know that they need to go to a specific area or they're about to be served. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So without further ado, let's begin this teardown. Now I wouldn't scrap this normally um, if it works, but in this case I'm just doing it for the video. But I highly suggest if you ever get one of these pager systems to try to sell them because you can make several hundred dollars. But I'm really only scrapping this for the video just to show you guys what's inside. Um, so... Without further ado, let's begin. I've removed the rechargeable battery, and now I've got this empty unit. We'll get to this later. So, the first thing to do on these is flip it upside down and remove all the screws you spot. The first pieces are here. There are two screws at the bottom. And I flipped it around, and there's a few more screws here. There's a whole bunch, too. So, I'm going to go ahead and just remove all those screws with a small little screwdriver here. So it's going to take a while, so I'm going to go ahead and pause it. So once all those screws are removed, this whole thing comes right apart. So this front is just some plastic and metal. This little membrane keyboard here. Really high quality construction, so I might actually see if this is worth something online. I really doubt it though. Plus the reason why I wouldn't also sell this is that there are a whole piece, bunch of pieces missing as well a lot of the pagers were in the box and they were just lost or destroyed so that's a nice piece of sheet metal some plastic and here we are greeted with the first circuit board that we spot it's mainly a one board construction I don't see any additional boards maybe for the display so all I gotta do here is just remove all the screws All right. So I've removed all those screws and everything falls apart. So here, there's just another piece of sheet metal. And this antenna construction here is just screwed on. So it should be able to just get our adjustable wrench and pop it right out. So let's go ahead and just find the where the hole begins. Actually, we'll do that later. Save some time. Oops. We scrapped. So, anyway. This is all going to be pretty much steel or brass. Not sure. Just use a magnet to test. So, it looks like this is going to be brass. Or this actually probably is stainless steel. Or non-magnetic stainless. 
Um, so this whole assembly, aside from probably the antenna, is going to be some brass. And this is going to be some just ordinary non-magnetic stainless. So the rest of that's sheet. And so here, this has got the main board. So there's wire. This that is for the antenna. And so all we got here is just some ordinary bolts. And to remove these, you'll need to actually use both of your hands to undo these screws. I'm holding one end with my needle nose pliers. Go ahead and position this downward here. You can see my leg there. Anyway, it's going to be a two hand job here. One to unscrew and the other to. This is not coming out. Looks like I'll just use this small one here. You can also hold down the bolt as well, which is what I'm doing. To kind of use a lot of pressure, but it comes out. And now you do the other side. That was a little hard. There you go. So undo that screw. Bolt. And so now this board will be able to come through. So there's a display board. It's not coming out either. So it turns out that it's soldered in place. So we'll need to break those connectors. This officially destroys any value that this board may have had. Okay. So it's not quite there yet. So. Broken that. Will this board come out? Hopefully. No, it's not. It's soldered on. So, there are some nice pins you cannot see in there, but there's some nice gold play pins. However, they're soldered in place, so it's not like a piggyback board style. So, I'll have to desolder that and to get access to that, which is no problem, but it's just a little pain. But, anyway. So that's pretty much all there is of this piece of equipment. Just a nice little BIOS CPU chip, possibly. Um, a lot of time them capacitors, those yellow boxes. A lot of monolithic ceramics and some small SMD chips. Oops, dropped the board. And of course, our LCD may have some indium, so you want to save those to the side for your indium collection. Um, and possibly in the future, because the prices may skyrocket. So definitely try to keep those. And maybe some gold in that connector, I doubt it, but definitely some connectors um, in here that do have some gold plating, like that one light blue colored baby blue connector will have some gold pins in there. And that's about it. No gold on the connector contacts for the button, so there's no gold plating on this board. However, that's pretty much it. But the story may be different with this smaller unit. I'm pretty confident in having that this may have some nice gold plating in it. Or you could maybe keep this for battery tester to make sure it actually works by it powering up. But no, I have another extra one, which I will keep. So all we got to do here is just hit it a couple times with a hammer. It's not coming out. Anyway just gonna pull this off so you can see a nice little button there I don't know how it's gonna come out though let's try Mr. Hammer again nope it's not so it looks like I'll just have to pry it apart by hand so that's pretty much all there is for now, I'll be right back when I have the right equipment.
But there we go. So I did find the right equipment. It turns out there's a little screw at the bottom. I thought it was like a headphone jack, but it turns out that this little mole, as I call it in there, is just holding the whole thing in place. So I'm just going to use out of my tamper-proof bit set. It will work as an ordinary hex bit screwdriver, though. Stick it in there. And move the screw. And this whole thing should come apart pretty easily, I think. No? Hmm. Interesting. Well, when I'll figure it out and it'll be open, I'll come right back. Alright, so I figured it out. So this top part here slides out. There you go. So this enclosure is plastic. There's a little bit of steel with that little spring, but it's not worth it. Anyway, so here you can see that antenna is gold plated. And that board there, this top board is two board two boards and the bottom one should pop right out. So this is pretty nice. There's a nice little antenna here and there's three oscillators. One, two, three, two of them are covered in some kind of shock resistant plastic rubber. And there's three of them actually that are covered. One there, one there, and one there, and then one bare one. And looking down there you can see there's actually gold plating on them. So every one of those individual oscillators are all, or crystals as some people call them, are all gold plated at the base, which means they probably have some higher gold value. And of course we got ourselves our chips and MLCCs on the bottom. It's hard to see them, so it's kind of pointless, but this on the main unit that has the small little DC motor. I may save this as a vibration unit um, in a project of some kind. I'm not so sure what, but I'll figure it out. Uh, there's a little switch there which has some gold plating and that connector pins are all gold plated as well. Uh, this battery connector, nothing special. And of course on the back you can see some gold plating there. Um, and some nice little chips there, here and there. But other than that, that's pretty much all there is in both of those units. So, all in all, not a bad scrap, especially if you can get a whole bunch of these. You can get quite a bit of gold boards. So, yeah, without any more further information, thanks for watching. Hope you found that video interesting in some way, or even useful, hopefully. And, well, I'll see you guys later. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.